Welcome, fight fans, again to the TitleFight.com roundtable. On the line, we have Steve Gallegos and Gordon Tamayo. I'm going to go over last night's uh, Showtime triple header featuring a couple of really action packed fights here that you know lived up to a lot of the hype that we were expecting here. Well, I take it back two for three out of that lived up to it. Uh, kicking off the second fight of the televised portion of it, there, we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, we had Lucas Matisse stepping in against John Molina Jr. Now, both of these guys are known for being being just rugged fighters can get in there like to trade um, both of them were coming off of some pretty disappointing uh, fights from from previously um, a couple fights back and John Molina as you remember with that first round demolition job from Antonio DeMarco since then he's been kind of on the warpath to, to make it back up the ranks here and Lucas Matisse in losing to uh, a decision over Danny Garcia you know, what we saw here was two guys that were really on the warpath to, to make a statement and letting people know that they were here. Um, they hadn't gone anywhere. And what they gave fight fans last night was was a real reason to want to tune in and watch the sport of boxing. Um, as both of them were going into it, we saw Lucas Matisse being dropped several times in the earlier rounds. One of them was a, a nice clean shot. The other one was one that was looked like behind the head, so not so much. But on the books, it was still counted as a knockdown. And then in the later rounds, we saw the machine just pick up the steam and ended up stopping John Molina. 11th round uh, KO there. So... Really, really action-packed fight that in the beginning had some people questioning Matisse, and he totally turned the tide on that quick. Steve, as you were watching that fight, give us your breakdown. Well, you know, um, I expected uh, Matisse's power to be uh, to make the difference in the fight. I know Molina is a banger himself and can, um, has that uh, good knockout power, but, you know, I picked... Uh, Matisse to, to stop Molina um, within seven. Um, of course, you know, went a little longer than what I predicted. Um, but, you know, it was it was kind of a shocker, you know. Um, in the early rounds, you know, Matisse um, was more, a little sluggish, you know, uh, throwing, you know, hard shots, you know, uh, kind of being a little reckless, um, not using his jab like, he's, like he should have been. And, of course, the first knockdown uh, by Molina, you know, was a good was a good right hand shot, you know, landed cleanly in the temple. Uh, second one, you know, was uh, a little bit behind, you know, a little bit towards the back of the head. Both of them were actually flash knockdowns. As Matisse wasn't uh, as hurt, you know, as 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 you would have thought he would have been. Uh, but once he got that jab cooking in the third round, you know, that's when he picked up the pace uh, using that jab, which I say is a very underrated um, aspect of his game. Um, it sets everything. Up up and he just started you know landing um, hard shots hard right hand shots you know off that jab and then you know as the fight went on you know that uh, Molina wasn't going to be able to take too many of Lucas's shots because Lucas hits very hard yeah, they were really starting to take their their toll on him. Um, you know, the doctor was just about to stop the fight there in the 10th round, and uh, his trainer, Goosen, was right on top of him, you know, trying to get in there saying he was okay. And short time later, you know, it wasn't long before Matisse came in there, jumped on him, and closed the show. So he knew what he had to get done. It was It was only a matter of time there. Props to both of those fighters. A lot of buzz building around that being a potential fight of the year uh, candidate. So far, you know, I got my vote on that one as well. That was a nice war. Um, Post-fight, you know, we got both fighters that were talking rematches already just in different different areas here. Molina, more than happy to jump in with a rematch with a guy like Matisse again. Said he loved it. It was a good war. Would like to do it again. And who can blame him? He's got, he got a good spotlight for this fight, which is exactly what he was going for. Uh, Matisse, on the other hand, would like to avenge the loss to Danny Garcia. First crack that he had at that title that he fell short on. You know, real quick, we've seen a couple... Comments flying around online about, uh, you know, Garcia not wanting to give him a shot, saying that, you know, when does the challenger get a, get a shot at challenging him again for a title after he got a shot? Um, we've seen that already happen before uh, with Morales, of course, that stepped in to face Garcia twice. Steve, would you like to see a rematch with the, with uh, Matisse and Garcia? You think they would they would even entertain the thought? With Golden Boy and, and uh, Garcia's management team, I mean, what else is really on the table for him? He didn't look too hot against his last out and against Herrera. Um, what else would you would we see on the table for him other than a Matisse rematch? What do you think? 
You know, I really don't see any other real options out there for Danny Garcia. Um, I think that Golden Boy, you know, will not risk uh, having him uh, step up against the likes of, uh, say, Sean Porter or Keith Thurman. Uh, I think a Matisse rematch would be would be great, you know. Uh, first fight, you know, um, the fact of the matter was that when uh, Matisse's eye was swollen up, uh, the corner did not have an end swell, and I think that made a big difference in the fight because they had no other way, real way to treat that, that eye. And also, you know, uh, Matisse didn't use that jab like he should have been. If, you know, once he gets that jab pumping, you know, it sets everything else up, and I think that could have made a big difference had he used it more. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, and basically, the way he looked last night, you know, he still got that power, still got that star power, uh, probably the most exciting fighter to watch in sport. Um, Garcia, the way he looked um, in his last fight against Herrera, you know, I don't know whether he's lost a step or not, but if he if he's to remain at 140 pounds, what other fight out there is there for Garcia? So, I mean, if, if, if a guy like Eric Morales, who had no business whatsoever being in the ring in a rematch with Garcia, and it showed, you know, as he was as he was knocked out pretty bad, uh, then why not give Matisse another, another crack at a at, at the at his world title, you know, be a great fight. You know, who knows? It could probably be a different story this time around. Yep, that's exactly probably why they won't. You know, <laughs> there might be a different story this time around. So who knows? I think they're trying to be really careful about who he's who he's fighting next. Well, time will only tell on that one. Speaking of Porter, you know, one of his uh, quote unquote friends in the boxing world there, who also headlined the bout, Keith Thurman, came back and and to face a, a veteran of the game. And Julio, the kid Diaz. Now, what we've seen happen, a lot of people were predicting an early stoppage with this, as, as Keith Thurman's known to to be stopping everybody that comes on his track here. Uh, we saw go a little bit earlier than what I was predicting on it. Um, third round TKO. Thurman was really swinging with bad intentions in this fight, landed some pretty vicious body shots, one of which uh, seemed to be the deciding factor in closing the show and and causing the corner to throw the towel in. Um, Post-fight, as we've seen uh, Diaz talk about, you know, he's, he's never quit a fight. We know he's a warrior and, you know, just one of those things where he's human. He got caught with a big shot from a young up-and-coming fighter who packs a punch. Uh, Steve, I know you had some early predictions for this bout as well. What was your overall take on on Thurman's performance for this fight? You know, I thought it was spectacular. It's exactly what I thought he would do. Um, I did not expect Diaz to, to last very long with Thurman. I predicted the fight wouldn't go longer than five, and it would end, you know, at the earliest within three. So, you know, my prediction was pretty spot on. Uh, Thurman, you know, uh, you know, showed a lot of discipline in this fight. You know, he, as you know, he used that jab very well. You know, he was throwing hard right hand shots. Um, you know, one thing I loved about him is how he was able to land a good right hand and then step away and kind of duck and slip. Um, you know, did his counter punch very, very well. You know, he showed some a lot of a lot of poise. You know, a lot of discipline. Wasn't reckless in there trying to go for the you know trying to go bombs out. You know, he was picking his shots, and uh, body shots, you know, were were incredible, you know, especially the one that, um, which we think, you know, uh, did the damage, you know, that injured uh, Diaz. So, very good performance, you know. Can't take nothing away from Julio Diaz, you know. He's a veteran, you know, he, he did very well. He's a very durable fighter. Um, you know, he's not the one that's going to go in there and make excuses. You know, I think he was legitimately hurt. You know, nothing against him. He showed, he showed a lot of heart, you know, hung in there fairly well. Um, landed some, some decent shots of his own, even though he doesn't, uh, can't match the punch and power of Thurman. But give him an A-plus for effort in that one. Yeah, no, he definitely walked in there without fear in the lion's den there. He came, he came to fight, you know, regardless of how the outcome came in. He wasn't fighting scared you know so props to him for that as well you know on the landscape now for Thurman here we got a kid who's who's on the rise who packs a punch who's demolishing everybody in his path he he still has some holes in his game from my perspective as far as his defense is concerned but you could tell he's working on that stuff um as far as what's next on the landscape for him Steve you know we got Sean Porter as we talked about with those two uh, he said he says they're they're friends and you know he's willing to do it whenever his people are do you see something like that being on the landscape I mean, he, he always talks about Mayweather but that's like you said uh Willy Wonka and everybody wanting the golden ticket don't see that happening anytime soon 
Who would you like to see him matched up against? You know, anybody anybody you match Keith Thurman up against, it's going to be a great fight. You know, Thurman comes to him. Um, he's impressive each time out. I'm not sure if Porter's people or Al Heyman is ready to put uh, to match um, him against Porter as of yet. Um, well, here's a thought. You know, maybe. Here's a thought. We've seen, we've seen Zab Judah there ringside. I mean, you think that was just... You know, for for the fun of it, or do you think he had some intentions behind being ringside? You know, Zab's a big fan of the sport. You know, you see him at a lot of fights, but um, you know, matching you know him up against uh, someone like Thurman at 147, it may be a good fight for Thurman. You know, it is a it is, Zab Judah is a big name. Um, it's a it's a veteran that he can um, that he can learn from. You know, I don't see him losing um, against Zab Judah because Thurman, you know, is just too young and got too much fire. But, you know, it would be an intriguing matchup. I think it's something they'll probably match him up with for the meantime. I don't see him going up against the Porter or even Mayweather at this point. You know, maybe, you know, we did talk yesterday and we thought maybe um, a Matisse um, Thurman fight would be would be a great fight. You know, um, I think it'd be an easy easy match to make. Say if Garcia doesn't want to fight uh, Matisse, uh, maybe it, it may be time for Matisse to move on. You know, maybe move up to 147. He's definitely got the punching power to do so. And a uh, fight with him and Thurman, well, that'd be a great match. Two very hard power punchers. Let's see who who can take each other's shots better. So mm-hmm. I would like to see that one, honestly. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing that either. That could be. He lights out for either one of those guys. Good, th- good thoughts there. Well, moving on here, we're moving into the final leg of the moment. You know, Floyd Mayweather coming up against Chino Maidana in a, in a fight that's been building up some hype there. We've got to see a couple episodes of All Access already that have kind of been highlighting uh, certain parts of each other's camp leading up into that. Uh, Steve, what are your thoughts so far as far as just watching training camps and how they've been going a, a, a as far as each fighter is concerned, and what are your thoughts leading up into this this weekend? You know, I don't think conditioning is going to be a factor in either camp. You know, I think Floyd is actually training um, a lot harder, a lot more serious than we than we've known to see him in the past. Um, he's he knows that Maidana is very dangerous. He's not taking them lightly. Um, usually, we always hear um, some insults from Floyd and his camp. You know, taking shots at you know the other fighter, but I've not heard. Floyd say one negative thing towards Mike Donna as of yet. You know, his camp tried to make um, an insulting remark uh, towards Mike Donna, and Floyd basically said, no, no, don't don't say that. You know, my, my opponent's a very tough fighter, you know, so um, so Floyd you think that's, you know, definitely training very hard. Is, is that just him trying to sell the fight, you think, or because, I mean, obviously these aren't doing the same kind of numbers as, it, as they were for the one versus Canelo. Is that him just making sure he's selling the fight and showing some respect towards Maidana, or do you think there's some legitimate concern there? Uh, probably a little bit of both. I really think he, he respects Maidana as a whole. How can you not respect someone like Maidana? Um, and yes, I think there is concern, you know, with the with the punch and power that, that Maidana has. He's turned a lot of fights around, you know, uh, based on that punch and power. I mean, Ortiz, you know, dropped him right, you know, within the first 30 seconds of the fight. And he turned it around almost immediately. Mm-hmm. Khan, the same way, almost had uh, Maidana out. Maidana was able to turn the tables on that one, um, turned into a spectacular fight. I mean, Devin Alexander, you know, uh, you know, boxed him, you know, stayed on the outside, did not, was not willing to engage with him, but also Maidana was fighting on his turf. And then, of course, according to what uh, Leonard Ellaby said, that, you know, inside sources say that Maidana was very sick prior to the bout, but decided to fight anyway. So, um, you know, he's, he's a great fighter that, that, you know, turns fights around, you know, with his punching power. Look what he did to Adrian Broner. You know, not very many people, including myself, gave Maidana a fair chance in that fight, and look what he did. So um, I think there is some concerns there from the Mayweather camp. But Floyd is, you know, but like Floyd said, he's just gonna he's just gonna go in there and you know be himself, do what he does. You know, Floyd's got probably the best boxing IQ um, in the game, or probably in the in the whole history of the sport. And I think that that um, his boxing IQ and his smarts and his ring generalship is going to make a difference in this fight. Not a knock on my Donna. It's just that Floyd is just too great of a fighter. Um, and he will not, I don't think he'll get loaded in that slugfest. I honestly think that Floyd's going to, you know, outbox him uh, rather easily. Um, besides the real, uh, you know, the whole punch's chance, I don't give my Donna 
much of a chance whatsoever in this fight. Yeah, I think much, a lot of people are kind of leaning in that direction too. No knock against Maidana. He's he's phenomenal heart. Like you said, he's turned around a lot of fights, but Mayweather's a total different animal than everybody he's he's faced in the past here. I think most people are seeing it that way too, that he's not going to elect to stand in front of him and trade kind of like he's hinted towards, even though he said that in the past before. We've seen the exact opposite. Floyd's a boxer, and uh, I expect him to do the same. I expect him to box. So looking forward to that as well. Well, thanks everybody again for tuning in to the thetitlefight.com. Again, Steve Gallegos, Gordon Tamayo signing off. Until next time.